I want to start by asking Rajdeep first this change in tonality that we've seen. Because when he was governing, the message was Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas, going and meeting the Arab sheikhs, embracing them, talking about Hajj pilgrimage. Now he's targeting a community in a very. We, we've seen this from Chief Minister Modi uh, during the election, assembly election campaign. We've also seen it in 2017 in Gujarat. We've seen it in Uttar Pradesh uh, the first time round when they said Kabristan, uh, Shamshan Ghat. Why after phase one, Rajdeep, in your view, has the Prime Minister decided to go down this hyper-aggressive route? Thanks very much, Rahul. I think part of it was in your introduction when you mentioned that the low voter turnout, that there is a 4% decline in the first phase, suggests a sense of listlessness. You see, all this euphoria, drumbeat, up ki bar, char so par, Ram Mandir Pran Pratishta, there was a feeling that there was a wave, a euphoria across the country. As the election has come, partly because you could argue it's hot out there, it's a seven-phase election, it's a marathon, it's been difficult to galvanize the flock to come in the kind of large numbers the BJP might have hoped. So what do you do? You go back to your basics. Uh, the Hindu-Muslim dog whistle has always been part of the basics uh, over the last uh, two decades and more uh, of the Bharatiya Janata Party, even pre-Modi and certainly during the, uh, the Modi era. So I think there is that desire to galvanize the flock, which is one reason. Reason number two, I think in the last couple of weeks, Rahul, you may have seen the Congress and the opposition has gone on about this constitution in danger. Sambhidhan khatre mein hai narrative. And in parts of the country, especially in North and Central India, messaging has been put out that uh, if the BJP comes back to power sooner or later, reservations may also be denied to you. And they've gone and targeted SC, ST and OBC communities on that plank. So you need a counter narrative. And therefore, Mr. Modi is going out there and saying, look, they are talking about the constitution in danger. I'm telling you, look at their manifesto. There will be wealth redistributed. They will want, uh, in, in, in the guise of income equality, they will take away your wealth. Now, that's not mentioned in the manifesto. But clearly, just as constitution in danger is not mentioned in the BJP manifesto, uh, the, the BJP is trying a counter narrative by pushing this idea that wealth redistribution could result in a loss of income for certain groups. And the third one, is you just want to normalize this entire narrative of Hindutva dog whistle. You see, you go to the floating voters with the idea of Viksit Bharat, uh, Amrit Kal, but to your core constituency out there... But the there, core is already yours. The core is yours, but as, as you said, Rahul, at the outset, and I said here, in the first round, there's a sense that why hasn't the voter turnout gone up? If you're no, talking about Char so Par, if you're talking about, you know, uh, a major, major euphoria you know, for he, Prime Minister Modi to return, then why hasn't the, the voter point. come in? As you look at that data set about voter turnout going down, and the India Today Data Intelligence Unit has mapped out the different seats. So in about 93 of the 102 seats, voter turnout was down. Now remember, Ajdeep. When voter turnout goes down, the common perception would be that this is disadvantaged BJP. The reality is that the BJP has a far higher propensity of bringing out its voters to the polling booth on counting day. So when, because they've got more money, they've got more resources, they've got more cadre, they'll bring their voters out. So when voter turnout goes down, it doesn't necessarily mean disadvantaged BJP. Absolutely. And, and just two short points. One, you're absolutely right. I believe a lower voter turnout actually works to the advantage of the BJP because of their last mile connectivity, their booth management, their various uh, 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 booth level workers who, who put in the real effort to ensure that their own voters come in. So you're right there. But when you have a low voter, voter turnout, it can also result in margins getting narrow. And when margins get narrow, who knows, a small swing one way or the other can actually affect a few seats, particularly the marginal seats. Remember, the BJP has pushed this election for the last five months as Apki Bar, Char So Par. So when you've done that, when you set your uh, eyes on Everest and you're ending at Kanchanjanga, then you're worried. Then you're, how do I reach Everest again? So I need to galvanize the flock. I see this both as a weapon of mass distraction to take away from the constitution in danger argument and Rahul, a way of trying to galvanize your flock. Let me put this question to Sanju Varma. 
this idea that the opposition has been carrying to voters. They're quoting Anand Thekde, Jyoti Mirda, uh, Govil, so many BJP leaders who've said something about changing the constitution. The opposition is taking this to voters in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, elsewhere in the heartland, saying they intend, if they get these 370 seats, to change the constitution and to take away reservation. Now, we've seen in 2015 in Bihar, that idea, you know, takes root very quickly. Is the prime minister trying to push the counter narrative that is not us who are taking reservation away. The Congress in states like Andhra Pradesh actually try to take reservation away from the Dalits, the scheduled tribes and give it to the Muslim. Is that really what? So you've got an opposition attack which is being counter attacked by the Prime Minister in this way. What according to you Sanju Varma is going on here? You know uh, Rahul, I will answer your very pointed question without any ifs or buts. But I'm reminded of a very famous saying by Tennessee Williams. The only thing worse than a liar is a liar who is also a hypocrite. And without being offensive to Rajdeep Sardesai, I think here Rajdeep Sardesai is lying and is also showcasing his hypocrisy. And I'll tell you why. When you say that the Prime Minister is dog whistling and you know trying to polarize the electorate with his Hindu-Muslim narrative, I want to remind Rajdeep Sardesai through your show, Rahul Kaval, that less than 48 hours back, Mamta Banerji says that you know if the BJP comes back to power, CAA will be there, NRC will be there, UCC will be there, and while addressing a Muslim population largely at this public rally, she says, don't vote for them, because otherwise your Aadhaar card will be taken away, your ration card will be taken away, you will no longer be Indian citizens. But I see that the entire media That is not dog whistling. When Rahul Gandhi at a public platform says, Hindu dharma shakti ka poojan hota hai, aur hum shakti, clearly not taking a pot shot at Sanatan Dharma, but blatantly saying that if the Congress led dot dot alliance comes to power, Hinduism will be a thing of the past. Okay. But nobody says that. So that you is made that speech. attack People in the beginning. Can you come to the debate that I am having? Can you respond to my question, please, Sanjuji? What exactly do you want me to say? I'm just answering your question. This is exactly the point I'm making. Rahul, please understand one thing very clearly. That in West Bengal 2021 elections and in the Tamil Nadu 2021 elections, what happened? If you go back and call out the data from your uh, uh, you know panel of experts, you will find out that the voter turnout was lower than what it was in the previous assembly elections. And I remember people saying, "Oh, voter turnout come hai. Iska matlab is baar to Tamil Nadu mein BMK has an edge." Voter turnout come here West Bengal May in 2021 compared to 2016. Iska Mamta Banerji certainly has an edge. And exactly that happened. DMK came back to power. Mamta Banerji came back to power. 